The budget proposal eliminates the caps on the Milwaukee private school voucher program and cuts $30 million in special programs for things such as improving pupil academic achievement. For reaction to the proposal, we turn now to the state superintendent of public instruction, Tony Evers. And superintendent, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, what is your initial reaction to the cuts proposed to K-12 in the state budget? Oh, uh, they're significant. I, the, the kids in the state, uh, the students in the state didn't create this mess. And uh, unfortunately, it looks to me like uh, the budget is being balanced on their backs. I, I just, w the, the level of, of cuts that will be needed to to make this happen are, are going to be severe and yet given the the magnitude of the uh, deficit going forward mm -hmm. did did these kinds of cuts come as a surprise to you oh i knew there would be cuts but there uh, i i guess uh they, they they came more significant than, than i realized especially the the ability for school districts to raise revenue with the revenue limits being actually decreased for the first time it's it's his, it's history making and it's the largest uh, cut uh, our largest cut in state aid ever in in for public schools and it's history making in that the revenue limits are actually decreasing are you suggesting that that the cuts to k12 um are more than they should be, that, that he didn't have to do this, that he could have gone elsewhere? Well, all I can say is that in order for our state to move forward economically, we have to have children uh, that are achieving at higher levels, and, and we need to be investing in, in public education, not taking it away. So I, 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 I don't ascribe any motives to this. All I'm saying is the cuts are, are far too deep. What will it mean for schools across Wisconsin? Well, certainly, I, I believe it will mean uh, larger class sizes. I think it will mean programs are being cut uh, I, I, and, and just kind of a slash and burn uh, uh, atmosphere. It, it's going to be difficult. People, people uh, now that's part of the legislative process, uh, they need to be talking to their legislators. Who takes the biggest cuts? I, I, I still uh, perceive it as uh, a cut to kids. I, I, you know, I can't say secondary or elementary. It is children that are going to be that hurting from this. What about um, districts? Are, are districts treated differently in this? Well, a little bit. It's, there, there's, it's somewhat of a, a connected to our funding formula that, that's a bit haywire. So there will be different levels because their revenue limits are different to begin with. So I'd say it'll range anywhere from uh, $500 per pupil to over $1,000 per pupil. What about the flexibility that the governor talks about that he wanted to realize in this budget repair bill whereby um, uh, employees would have to pay more toward their mm. health care and, and pensions and that that would make up for these cuts, does it? Yeah, I, I've talked to superintendents across the state and I haven't found one yet that has said we're breaking even on this deal. In fact, I talked to one superintendent that said the only way we're going to break even if teachers pay uh, us to come to work. Uh, it, it just isn't going to happen. Hmm. Now, could school districts make up for the cuts without stripping collective bargaining? Not that, as you just said, they could, you know, anyway, but... Yeah, I, I don't see how, you know, moving against and removing, essentially moving collective bargaining gains much more. I mean, they, they, with the, the unions have already indicated they're giving up on the most important monetary items, that's retirement and, and, and health insurance, and their pay is being uh, capped. So I, there's, you know, I've been in schools. I've written, worked with the teachers on contracts. I, I know what's in it, and there's just not much more there uh, that that supposed flexibility will give them. Are, are those work conditions that are a part of collective bargaining um, important to teachers in schools? Well, absolutely. And, and collective bargaining also is a way for people to work out their differences and to establish good practices. Uh, it, if it's done correctly, it's not a constraining thing. It can actually be a, a, a good, a vibrant thing for the education community. What is your message to families and students and teachers on this budget proposal and, and what it could mean to education in Wisconsin? They, they have to stay tuned. They have to, they have to collect facts from their local school districts, be involved with their local school boards, be involved with their lo local legislators. They, they need to be concerned, but they need to operate from a, a basis of facts, and those facts really are at the, at the local school district level. Superintendent Evers, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.